welcome back, and here's part three of working on the Optimus 111B restoration and rebuild. So you may recall how this burner looked before I got to it. It had the um, gallery bent on it, and I straightened that out, and it also had a lot of crud on it. After a good clean and some time spent in the bead blast cabinet, this is how it came out. Nice and clean, everything, re all the crud removed and uh, down to the original bare metal. Like makes it look good. Here I have all my parts all cleaned up, ready to go for reassembly of the burner. First step is to take the screen, which I have cleaned with some Coleman fuel and my brass bristled brush which is also useful for cleaning burners. And I have that screen all nice and clean now. I want to make a nice tight roll of the brass mesh screen so that I can put it back into the feed tube of the burner. You'll find if you kind of sort of screw it into the tube so that the trailing edge is behind, that it'll go in easier and it's not so hard. If you go the other way, it's almost impossible to get it in. So make sure you, yeah, that won't work. Don't go that way. You want to be going the other way. It's important to make sure too that you don't have any extra wires hanging out the end, that it should all be just flush. Otherwise the extra wire may get in the angle of the seat and cause you leakage problems. So make sure that's all in there. Next step is to rebuild the spindle. So here we have the cleaned spindle and here's that little ring. Now remember one side of it is dished. You can see the dish side here, especially now that it's clean. And the other side is flat. The flat side is going to go towards the gear teeth that are on the spindle. You can see these two graphites. The one on the left is the original graphite, and it's less than half the size of the brand new graphite on the right. So this old one is, no, is pretty much gone, so I'm going to replace it with this new one that's on the right. Then I go ahead and put the spindle nut on and essentially this is a complete assembly at this point ready to be installed in the burner. I go ahead and install the spindle assembly into the burner. I want to turn the spindle itself so it threads into the burner. If your spindle nut's in the way for your fat fingers like it is for me, you can just remove that temporarily. Go ahead until it's seated and then go ahead and thread the spindle nut into the burner. On some burners you may find that it's difficult to get that spindle nut started because of the fatness of the graphite. You can shove it in there with the spindle nut and that'll help you get those threads started. You can use the tool that came with the stove to tighten the spindle nut or I prefer just an adjustable wrench. Tighten the spindle nut down and it will cause the graphite to expand and create a liquid and gas proof seal. Use a spindle knob to determine that you haven't over tightened it. You want snug but not too tight. Not tight enough yet? Just go ahead and tighten it up a little more. You can sneak up on this proper operation. I recommend not installing the cleaning needle now but rather go ahead and get the rest of everything done and try the stove without the cleaning needle. Add it only after you're sure all the other problems of the stove are squared away. I like to use a little thread lubricant on the threads of a jet in a stove, especially the first time after bead blasting it. Both of these products work the same for me. I don't understand what the difference is, so pick whichever one you like and go with it. The copper does blend a little better visually with the brass of the stove burner. Use a small artist's brush to apply a very small amount of thread lubricant to the threads on the jet. Thread the jet into the stove burner very carefully with your fingers till you're sure that it is seated, then spin it on the rest of the way. You can use the little tool that came with the stove to snug up the jet inside the burner. 
Let's take a pause and talk about the unique qualities of the 111B burner. You can see that there are two tubes on the burner, only two. And what you may not realize is that one of those tubes is not even a feeding tube. Let's look at that. This tube is hollow and is just a dummy tube. You can see there's a hole at the bottom here. And if you take a look at the top, you can see the corresponding hole at the other end of the tube. So this is just hollow, it doesn't conduct fuel at all. And let me prove that to you. I can take this wire and insert it in the bottom of the burner and push it all the way through and out the top of the burner. Demonstrating, see? Demonstrating that tube is in fact a dummy tube. The fact that it's a dummy tube can come in useful because you can put your denatured alcohol right in the top of the burner, have it flow down through the tube and out the bottom into the spirit pan below. Because of the ability of white gas to vaporize so easily, it's likely that the feed never actually goes into the burner head, but only to the end of the spindle, where the heat conducted from above causes it to vaporize. No one's really tried the, to open one of these up, so we don't know for sure. My guess is that both tubes are dummies and the head just is a heat sink to conduct heat to the spindle of the stove. Okay, that's how all that works. Now I'm on to going ahead and installing the spirit pan on the stove. I want to put my little fiber washer on here so I don't have denatured alcohol leaking out the bottom. And I just spin that on there and tighten it up hand tight. Make sure you keep the feed tube nut out of the way, otherwise it'll get stuck down in there. And this burner is ready to be installed back on the tank of the stove. Here are all my parts ready for final reassembly. You can see on the left, I have the pump cup sitting in a little vial of mineral oil and that's been soaking for a few hours. Have the tank which has been polished and cleaned both inside and out. I have the burner, I have the fuel cap, and I have the NRV. These are the last components we're going to put together and let's get started on that. First thing we want to do is put the NRV back inside the pump tube. If you shake the tank a little, it'll usually seat the NRV down inside the hole at the other end of the pump tube. Use the NRV tool to go ahead and thread it carefully into the bottom of the pump tube. Just snug is all you need. The advantage of LDPE head gaskets on these NRVs means you don't have to get all crazy with tightening it up. Just gentle snugging is what you want. Next, I'll install the pump back into the stove. I'm going to just take a little of that excess oil off there and carefully work the pump cup, the leather pump cup, into the opening of the pump tube. You may have to kind of squish it in there. Be real careful you don't fold it back on itself or, or catch an edge on that. Once you have it in, you can shove it all the rest of the way in and thread on the pump lid. Wipe up any spilled oil that you have just to keep everything nice with your rag and then we can do an operation check operate the pump and listen for that sound of the air going okay. past the nrv in the tank the nrv is working just fine and, and that actually has a pretty good feel to it yep got no problems there that's good all right next step we want to take our burner here it is and we want to attach it to the tank. So there you go. Just going to take that like that, spin the nut on, like so. Okay, now you see you want to have the burner like that. I think you can see that. So the, the tank is like here and the burners like there they're perpendicular to each other and that would be the ideal 
method. And what happens is when you tighten up the nut, it wants to make the burner twist. So I'm going to do this. Normally I wouldn't do it the way I'm doing it, but because of the way the camera is, I am doing it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. This is a brass to brass joint where the fuel feed yeah okay so you want that to be fairly snug in here it'll keep it from twisting but it needs to be snug because it's a brass to brass uh, seal right in here this completes the assembly of the stove for testing purposes and that's what i'm going to do next the owner of the stove didn't send me their flame ring so this is one i pulled off of one of my other stoves the stove has been fueled and it has the fuel cap back on it, has not been pressurized. We're gonna do that next. Make sure the spindle valve is closed and then apply some pressure to the stove. I do about 20 pumps here, that's fine. You can see how you can actually put these denatured alcohol through the little dummy tube into the spirit pan from right on top of the stove. That's real helpful if you've got the windshield on the stove which I don't in this case for testing purposes but you know it makes it easier go ahead and light that and we'll speed things up here going through the preheat at super fast speed back at regular speed now there you go that's what I wanted you to see you notice how there's a small flame at the spindle nut there this is often what happens if you haven't got your spindle nut tight enough when you first start it you're going to get that little little bit of flame right there and you can just do it on the fly as you can see I'm doing just tighten it up a little bit more and then the flame will go away so I'm pretty pleased with this test of the stove and we do it under some lower light so you can see the flame a little better so I'll shut it down now and let it cool off and reinstall the cleaning needle so that you can see how that's done the stove is cooled off and first thing you want to remove the flame ring so you can see what you're doing. The fuel cap has been loosened so there's no pressure inside the stove. And now we have clear access to the spindle valve and to the jet. Let's get started. So you can use the little tool that came with the stove again to loosen the jet. And once you have it loose enough you can use your fingers to unthread it from the jet seat in the stove burner. To install the cleaning needle, you'll need a common number two pencil with an eraser on the end. Proper orientation of the cleaning needle has the little teeth on the cleaning needle rack facing towards the tank. Those cleaning needle teeth need to face toward the tank. Insert the needle into the eraser head of the pencil. Actually, there we go. Yep. One, two, three. Let's see how we look. And as you open the spindle, you'll hear clicks as each tooth clicks past the teeth on the spindle. You want between three and five clicks. I set this initially for three clicks, but after testing it again, I, I added another click and set it to four. So add a little bit of that thread lubricant back on the threads, install the jet back into the jet housing, and tighten it up with your little wrench, and give it one final try. So here's the stove all put together and giving it a try on some Coleman fuel. And it's a good flame pattern and the cleaning needle works. Finally, just checking to make sure it throttles down smoothly and has positive shutoff without any candle flame. 
That way we know the spindle and is working, so, working as an intended. All done. And here's the stove after all the other parts were put back on it. And finally back in the box at the owner's home, ready for another camping trip. Hopefully you found this video helpful for your work on your 111B. Hopefully it'll also help you on any other 111s you work on. Thanks for watching. Please link, like, and subscribe. Happy camping!